painting up these 12 adamant cossacks in under 4 hours. Let me show you how. Start with black primer on all the models. Airbrushing them on allows you to get it into all the little corners of the models. And yes, I do everything fully assembled and based. Switch to white primer and spray at a 30 degree angle all the way around to create a zenithal highlight effect. Next comes the big time saver, Army Painter Speed Paints, which will go on all the horses. For this, I use a very broad brush which allows me to lay down a lot of paint very quickly. I start with one color and I paint several horses with it, in this case it's grim black. I use gray floor gray to create some dark gray horses. I switch to dark wood speed paint to paint some dark brown horses and then use hardened leather for some light brown horses. And I keep on going like this to create variety. The low viscosity of speed paint works really well with horses. It flows easily into every crevice. Here you can see a variety of colors on the horses which keeps things interesting. I will be painting up my Cossacks using this Perry Miniatures picture as reference. Using the same hardened leather speed paint as I did on the horses, I quickly paint up all their lances. I put Crusader Skin speed paint with a medium tip brush onto all the faces and hands. Then using some of the leftover speed paint from the horses, I paint beards and hair with them. I vary the hair color among the riders to create some variety between them as well. I then switch to High Lord Blue speed paint and I use these on the saddle covers and all the uniforms. The officer's cap gets High Lord Blue as well. I then apply Grim Black onto the caps of all the rest of the riders. The cartridge boxes on the rear of the riders also get grim black. And likewise for their shoes. Moving out of speed paints to acrylics, I switch to gun metal which goes on the spear tips and the swords and also the stirrups by their feet. Now to make the horses a little bit more varied, I use natural colored acrylics to paint their tails and manes. I randomized this step a little bit to create variety and it's also pretty fun to see how many different horses you can make just by painting different colored tails and manes. I then paint the hooves of the horses with leather brown. Leather brown also goes on the knapsacks and bedrolls underneath the saddle covers. I paint the sword sheets this color as well. Finally, I paint the chin straps for each of the riders with leather brown. Sometimes I like to use dark stone in place of black and I do this with the cross straps on all the riders. Dark stone has a natural highlighting effect which is one of the reasons I like it. I paint all the facings on the models with electric blue. It also goes on the waist sashes, on their shoulder straps, and for the officer, there is a sash on his hat. This also gets electric blue. I finish off electric blue on their collars. Now I switch to matte black and using a slightly smaller brush, I apply it onto all the brittles on the horses. This step is probably the most time consuming part. Just carefully trace on the black, take your time, and use the raised ridges of the brittles to your advantage. I should mention that if you used grim black on any of the horses earlier to make them look black, you can save a lot of time in this step because the brittles are already black. Simply just touch up the areas that need touch up and then you're done with the black horses. Besides the brittles, be sure to do the stirrups and the straps for the swords too. I put greedy gold acrylic paint on all the hilts of the swords for the officer as well as the riders. Moving on to washes, I use strong tone only on areas that did not get speed paint. For the speed painted areas, I basically just leave them alone. For the eyes of the riders, I use my normal treatment of white and black. 
white goes on with a small brush into the eye sockets, followed by a small dab of black paint for the pupils using the sharp end of a toothpick. I apply eyes for the horses in the same way as well, with white in the sockets, and since horses have fairly large pupils, I continue using the small brush to put those on as well. Lastly, I base my models with a simple application of Elmer's glue spread with an old brush followed by some basing material. In this case, it's meadow green that I got from Frontline Gaming Systems. Base all your models this way, and at this point, you're done. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope it gave you good pointers on how to field your cavalry faster. If you enjoyed this, I would appreciate if you hit like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Happy hobbying! Wargaming, and I hope to see you the next time.